Welcome everyone to Hadija Academy for Electrical Courses. Before we start this lesson, make sure to subscribe to our channel for more electrical lessons and hit the notification bell. Now let's go and start our lesson. In this video, we would like to discuss a very important definition, which is ultimate break capacity, rated break capacity, and service break capacity in circuit breakers. There are three definitions which are very, very important in understanding them. The first one is called the ultimate braking capacity. What does this even mean? According to the IEC standard, ICU, or the ultimate brake capacity, representing the maximum fault current, a breaker can interrupt once without damage. It means that our breaker is designed to interrupt this fault only once after which it will not be and can't be used again so it means that it can interrupt without being damaged without uh, causing fire without any issues but we can't use it again that's why it's called ultimate break capacity the worst case that can happen now when iec 6947 which is for industrial industrial circuit breakers or industrial applications you'll find that the testing procedure for breakers with icu will be as follows number one they provide a one interruption at icu so for example if this icu is 40 kilo ampere for a circuit breaker as an example then we apply a 40 kilo ampere short circuit to our circuit breaker as a test now, after, after this test, our breaker will not be operated again, but it will not be damaged. So this is the first test that we do. The second test is that we apply dielectric with the stand test. It means that we apply an over voltage on the breaker to make sure that our breaker um, insulation level is still the same. So we have to make sure that after having this severe fault, that our voltage level or insulation level is still as before. The breaker insulation didn't go down. Now here is an example for what I am saying. So if you look at this circuit breaker here, you will see ICU. There is ICS that we will see uh, in the next slides, but you will see here two uh, values which is important for me number one icu the icu which is the maximum uh, breaking capacity ultimate break capacity 50 kilo ampere it means that our breaker is designed for, for up to 50 kilo ampere without it being damaged we can't use it again most likely we can't use it again but at least it can interrupt this severe fault 50 kilo ampere at least once same as for this breaker here. Number two, you will see here IEC 6947-2. It means this one is in designed for industrial and critical applications. As you can see here, the same standard here. The next one, which is ICS, the service break capacity, which we have just seen here. This is critical again for industrial breakers, IEC 6947-2. Here in this time, this value which is given on the circuit breaker, the breaker can interrupt this value or this value three, at least three times and remain operational. Typically, we apply this value which is ICS usually 25% or 50% or 75 or even up to 100% of ICU. So at least our breaker should be designed to interrupt this value at least three times. So in order to test it in IEC, what they do is that they provide a three successive interruptions at ICS. So they apply different values, let's say 50%, 75%, 100% of ICU, dependent on what is designed our breaker. So we give it a three different faults in order to make sure that our breaker is designed for this. This is during the testing procedure, okay? So when they say that it is following IEC 6947-2, it means these breakers were, ha, have these faults applied to it. And after these faults, we also test for the dielectric strength by applying an over voltage. Now, if you look at this breaker here, you will see that here, 
This one is similar to this one for these values. You can see ICO 50 kilo ampere, the maximum fault current it interrupt without damage at, at least or maximum of uh, one time. However, ICS, you can see service uh, break capacity 35 kilo ampere less than this value or a percentage of this value. Now, this means that this breaker can interrupt this fault several times, maybe three times, maybe less, but at least three times according to the testing procedure. Now, why is this? Because if we designed our breaker to be to interrupt this maximum fault several times, this breaker will be very expensive because this breaker must withstand this fault current several times. That's why in order to save some money or save uh, on the cost of designing these breakers, we usually have one, at least it can interrupt the worst case at least once and interrupt a lower value several times. Now this is another circuit breaker. Let's look at it here. As you can see here, IEC 6947-2, it means for industrial applications. You will see here ICU, the ultimate break capacity. It depends on the voltage level you are working with. For example, at this voltage range, 65 kilo ampere. At this range, 35 kilo ampere. If you look down in here, you will find that the service break capacity ICS is 100% of ICU. It means that our breaker here is designed to interrupt this ICU fault current several times. Now the third one which is ICN. So these two ICS and ICU are designed specifically using IEC 6947-2 which is related to industrial applications. This one ICN is designed based on another IEC part in which it is related to residential or commercial application. ICN means the rated braking capacity. So ICN, the rated brake capacity for residential and commercial, it signifies the circuit breaker's ability to interrupt a short circuit current multiple times while remaining operational. This one is used for household commercial use where your reusability after faults is required. For example, if a short circuit happened in my house, I need my circuit breaker to be reopened again. So how do they test for this one according to this IEC which is related to household and commercial applications. This one here 6898-1. So the first one is that here we have a certain value. Let's say our breaker is uh, ICN is 40 kilo ampere. So what do they do? The first time they, they apply the 100% of the fault. 100% of the 40 kilo ampere. So this is the first test for rated break capacity, maximum short circuit current, maximum possible short circuit current that can happen. And this is will be our, uh, our rating for our breaker. So we apply 100% of this value. Second time we apply 50% of this value. If our breaker, I nominal or the rated break it, a breaker current is less than or equal to 25 and we apply 0.75 of the short circuit if i n greater than 25 great and then the third time we apply the same operation so we have three times 100 percent then reduced uh, fault short circuit fault and then we repeat this procedure okay so if you look at this breaker here like this one this is interesting breaker if you look at this circuit breaker here you will find number one IEC 6898 which means this part for uh, residential applications or commercial or household you will see that here it gives us ICN 10 kilo ampere so this is the ICN if it is if this breaker is used in household or commercial application then its own ICN value will be 10 kilo amperes. If you go down here you will see IEC 6947-2 which is for industrial application. If this breaker is used for industrial applications then if you go down here you will see ICU 
is 30 kilo ampere at this voltage ICU is 15 at this voltage and you will see the ratio between service braking capacity and ultimate braking capacity is 50% in the three cases so it means that this one if this brake are used for industrial it can withstand 30 kilo ampere once 15 kilo ampere once dependent on this operating voltage now for several times it will be 50 percent if it is operating at this voltage here so in the end we have two uh, parts of iec this one and this one this one for household and it has icn this one is for industrial and has icu and ics to summarize icu one shot maximum fault interruption industrial one fault and our breaker must withstand it icn our breaker must interrupt this fault several times used for residential and commercial ics a percentage of icu how much it can withstand faults as a percentage of icu now these are the tests that we discussed before and as we can see this standard with many circuit breakers is used for residential or light commercial molded case and air circuit breaker used in industrial most of the case of course these two are industrial and you can see the same standard for industrial and these are the applications for them now this is a summary for this and as you can see this one after interrupting must be reusable after service must be also reusable however for icu just once and then it can't be reused again let's have an example in order to understand how to select them so let's say we have an industrial plant 480 volt with a prospective fault current 65 kilo ampere so this is the fault current that is expected maximum fault current expected in this industrial plant now we need to select the breaker at first for industrial we have two values icu and ics right icu and ics so our icu must be greater than or equal this maximum fault current to at least interrupt it at least once to survive the worst case fault number two ics will be a percentage of the icu let's say for example 50 percent of it i will give you right now or later how to select this one or 50 percent 75 percent or whatever based on what application so this is how you select this short circuit values or break capacities inside Apple industrial plant for residential panel 230 volt with a maximum fault of 10 kilo ampere we said we have ICN so we said should select ICN of 10 kilo ampere or greater as you have seen right now now in practical guides and application notes you will find that usually for ICS these three we select it 25% for non-critical loads which uh, we don't matter if, if our breaker failed and 50% is usually better for industrial environment and 75 to 100% for more critical infra infrastructure that requires high reliability so these are the three important definition ICS, ICU and ICN hope you understand them well and their applications